Anna Sophocles knew the reason for the bleeding. It was because man had forgotten this season. Timptuous delight cascading from the bumbling abode, or Anna Sophocles was the voice that said, Go! The virgins tortured by old scaly men until they could see into the future but without any friends. With no clear voice and choice positioned adjacent to their face, the old men's grim sexless dream was incarnated in virginity's place. Oh, Rana Sophocles, if you had only stayed, man's self-fulfilling prophetical nature could have been spiked with laughter. But you left the in-between to men who are afraid to get lost and thought they could lose their minds like the laundry loses my socks. And they talk to the TikTok, a reference point for humiliated logic. They ruin women and men and put an asexual sodomite control freak in our erotic elation's place. If you stab them, they say, You stabbed me. This is the dead horse that risked its only death and its infinite lives for fortunes ghostly reprised in its closed eyes. Now, Rena Sophocles, come close, stay a while, and become stayer Sophocles. Liberate the women from their true oppression, the lackluster fucking of the self contained apparatus of so called me.
And with the meat flower fully furnished as the quantum telephone of the female sexual hand puppet theater, and both sexes thoroughly diluted in life-giving confusion, the necessary counterpart to moving with the electric snake of spiritual sex had been jellyfish to a charm. And so, Ranasophocles once again returned to the internal wind, this time in search of the intergalactic aphrodisiac. Oh, Ranasophocles! How he had not felt so giggly and pop-rocked since he was invited to God's house some 12,000 calendars ago. A shindig banqueted with terranium tea, one sip of the Amazonian variety of such a beverage, and you'd be gagging on painted poison dot frogs while simultaneously being tickled by sweet rain clouds and zipped with sedacious DMT shrubs. All the while, you're tasting undertones of virtual cannibalism Best to drink it in the summer when the natives remove their clothes and wash their holes. <laughs> but in his such words, the plan on that day was to take it. But in his such words, the plan on that day was to have a good game of looping dice. How do you play looping dice, you say? Well, you simply roll the dice, and as it joggles your glow and fluffs your pillow, the first god-person thing to realize the duration of time, so signified by the number on the die, was it loop seven seconds, seven minutes, seven hours, seven days? Was the loop seven seconds, seven minutes, seven hours, seven days, seven weeks, seven months, seven years, seven decades, seven centuries, or seven millenniums? Well, that god person thing who untangles the loop is rewarded with a monumental knick-knack. The most coveted of all? Why, it's the fruit bowl made of lights and silky white snow. But on this day, during the game of looping dice, just as Ranasophocles rolled the die, the serious brigade happened to arrive, freshly clipped from their daily spay. And they grabbed God and they proclaimed, We must convert you from literal to abstraction to save you from the bottom of the... And then, the Sirius Brigade pulled out what looked like a giant neon pink tennis racket in terrible haste. And two of the spade hoisted the Lord up above their damned curmudgeon faces. And Sophocles sprung up off his anus, thundering into action, transforming into Sophocles. But he was too slow. By the wake of his blow, it already hit the Lord, thoroughly past the I match I nation, all the way to the outskirts of the endless waterfalls of abstraction. And to make the scene more obscene, Rana Sophocles trip slipped on a holographic celebrity playing card of Charlie Sheen. And in a dramatic leaning tower of Pisa collapsing tumble, he flipped and stumbled into the tensioned matrix of the neon pink. And oh, Ranasophocles, being not as solid as God, he was cut into cubes. And when he came to, he found that he had become an ornate carving on a Mayan tomb. At his unfinished stone foot, a young Mayan team, finishing up Ranasophocles' details. And so, Ranasophocles animated himself and told a tale. And it ended in a question that no one could ever ask. And after such an unobtainable, <clears throat> such unobtainable wit, 
the boy grabbed a copper hammer and smashed him to bits. But it could not end in crass. Oh no! The boy returned the next day in a self-fashioned Ranasophocles mask. And in the empty space that had been Ranasophocles' resting place, the boy carved a mosaic of time. And when it was done, Ranasophocles poured out of the center into an invisible cast, like an unriddling rhyme. And he gazed at the boy in a perpetuated blur. And he knew, he knew, he knew, he knew, he knew, he knew about time. And so, knowing the true value of a divine liar, a sanctuary pillager, naturally, Ranasophocles pulled out a stroboscopic cylinder and inserted a piece of petrified wood into the center and turned it towards the sun and the sun shot down into a mirrored chamber and the wood became a flashing burning ember. Four translucent windows surrounded the cylinder, one a bear, one a duck, one a foot, and one the Eiffel Tower in miniature. And it began to spin, and it spun, and it spun, and it spun faster and swifter all together, accelerating with a whiny metallic whimper. And Rana Sophocles positioned it adjacent to the mosaic of time. Right at the center, and an image began to appear like a distant road sign. But it clung to no surface. It was so real, so vast, so lifelike, so near. And what focused itself into view was so fantabulously super de duper de queer that all the boy could do was widen, stretch, and grow a hypnotically, geriatrically long beard. And there, oh yes, in the crystal clear view was an enormous amphitheater. Dazzled in loud, shadowy, hysterical cheering in a single spotlight on the stage, jiggling like a silver platter of whores divorce, about to topple down to the floor. Why, it was Joan Rivers, square dancing alone with a grin that stretched to the bone. Back in present stare, with parental care, Ranasophocles handed the boy the stroboscope and fetched from his little hip sack a little tiny boat, and he pointed its bow directly at Joan Rivers. And the vision changed. It began with a quiver, and then it 360 and inverted in colossal colliding asteroidic fashion. And the mouth of the Red River of Joan splayed open, and the sticky mist it did emit could be felt as a breath of unconscious passion. And Ranasophocles flicked the boat in. And with his thumb, he felt for the direction of the internal wind. In and out and in again. Up popped the sail, ballooning in a blowy bend. And down the infertile river, he did begin. At its end, at the end of the land, at the end of time, there, Oh, yes, the flip-flopped, distorted, messy lemon drop with the darkness that shines. That's where the intergalactic aphrodisiac hangs from its cardinal shrine, thoroughly protected from the mind. That place where the limelight comes to a halt as a suspended solid dime. And back on the outside of Joan, Far away from the dime, the crowd cheered on. And further back still, but closer than you might think, the Mayan boy was approached by the will of the king. And the will of the king snatched the stroboscope in an attempt to obtain its power. 
and it promptly disassembled and became an hour. And the king looked around in a puzzle, and he happened to notice where Rena Sophocles had just been standing, a rainbow puddle appeared. The king thought it needed a good branding. But first, it needed a taste. He dipped in his finger, ever so slightly, and inserted it into the biggest hole on his face. And he felt amazed. Wait. A little tenseness. A little tightness. A little not quite rightness. The boy met the king's fearful gaze. And then earth-shattering silence descended like a haze. In the rainbow guys on the fountain and sprayed an endless rainbow vomit and there's no earthly way to stop it! The wheel of the king had no idea of the rainbow's relation to the looping of time. Only did I, said the sky. Luckily, the boy, being an artist, grabbed the copper hammer in zeal and began depicting the king's headless chicken ordeal. And just as the boy started, Rena Sophocles got a chill. Ooh. And he remembered, well, he was beginning to remember what he had forgot. What number had it been that day at God's? Was it 11? Or 8? Or 13? Or 15? No, it was 12. Yes, it must have been 12. 12. It was 12. I think it was 12. Was it 12? What the hell? I think it was 12. It must have been 12. I don't know. Could have been 12. Could have been 12. I don't know. It could have been 12. It could have been 12.